The plan would require the richest of the rich in America to contribute a tiny fraction of their income to that effort. They would pay seven-tenths of one percent a surtax on income in excess of a million dollars a year. So if someone made $1.1 million a year income, they would have to pay an additional $700 to put America back to work. Yet my Republican colleagues adamantly oppose this fair and balanced approach because it would require Americans who have done better and better each year for decades to contribute a tiny fraction more than they do now. These people are the top two-tenths of one percent of American taxpayers. Two-tenths of one percent of the richest of the rich. Yet Republicans have put the interests of these millionaires and billionaires ahead of those who are desperate for work and has cost this nation literally millions of jobs. It's important we be clear about who these lucky few, these millionaires and billionaires are who enjoy the protections of the Senate GOP. Who are they? Here's who they are. They're the same millionaires and billionaires whose annual after-tax income has increased by 275 percent over the last three decades. I repeat, Madam President, 275 percent. That's not some figure that was made up out of the blue by some right-wing or left-wing organization. It came from the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office. These are the same millionaires and billionaires whose annual after-tax income has increased by 275 percent over the last three decades. Between 1979 and 2007, the bottom 20 percent of wage earners saw their wages creep up slowly, 18 percent. Meantime, the top 1 percent saw theirs double again and again and again to almost 300 percent increase. The bottom 20 percent of wage earners saw theirs go up 18 percent. People I've talked about, the millionaires and billionaires, they have gone up almost 300 percent. In fact, their share of the nation's income is higher than at any time since 1928, just before the stock market crash plunging this nation into a Great Depression. Their share of the national income has doubled since 1979. Listen to this, Madam President. And now they take home more than half of all the money earned each year in this great country, even after taxes. They take home more than half the money earned each year in this country. That means this 1% now makes more than the other 99% combined. And they're not going to allow us to proceed to create hundreds of thousands of jobs for a tax increase of seven-tenths of one percent of the richest of the rich? No one deprives them of their prosperity. They've worked hard, and it hasn't been all inherited money. Well, we understand that. But their tremendous fortune, including their tremendous fortunes, means they can afford to contribute a key tiny fraction more to shore up the economic future of our nation. John D. Rockefeller, Jr., the grandfather of J. Rockefeller from West Virginia, who serves in this body today, his grandfather said, and I quote, every right implies a responsibility, every opportunity and obligation, every possession a duty. Every right implies a responsibility, every opportunity and obligation, every possession duty. 